really good project to see as well because in South Africa we make a great impact on the community so and you guys had a nice beautiful campus right it was green and open I was not like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> out of the city just seeing the lake yeah the lake that was gorgeous we don't I don't think we even have anything remotely close to the lake I wasn't expect that is that correct it it is right so in South Africa that's roundabout where you'd see us that's basically the model of how they'd uh <clears throat> they'd assess us and we wouldn't always get to see the average like oh. they that's the one thing about industrial engineers we get hunted <laughs> so <laughs> final year project was pretty great what was your final project i made an app did oh, you take well, part in any of your societies i was not right now but oh my um, word, that's so fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay you hear me yes i can hear you can you hear me yeah i do okay that's great so how you feel i'm fine i'm fine i'm good i'm excited <laughs> finally this is happening <laughs> yeah so you? i'm excited too and i'm fine okay so, that's how's yeah, your morning me? My morning is good, and these days actually a little bit busy because oh, sure. uh, yeah, two weeks later I will be in Germany, so packaging, documentation, kind of stuffs. Oh, I see. What are you going to be doing in Germany? Uh, I will be an exchange student for one year. That's nice. That's yeah. so exciting. <laughs> yes. How's is the your... light and everything like fine in my place? Like, is it okay? Can you see? Oh. It? yeah our two. Okay, okay. Uh, how's your work going <sighs> <It's> so busy <laughs> <laughs> i didn't finish off a lot of projects yeah um, yeah we, in my line of work we need a lot of customer interaction and not the customers aren't always prepared to interact or give you the feedback you need so mm. it's a lot of battling so your title is as a consultant yeah a modern work consultant. I'm trying to get them to change it to engineering consultant because mm. I don't just consult, I build too. So, um, yeah, but that is my title. I'm a consultant and I really enjoy it. It's really great. Yeah. First time we talk in the LinkedIn, you were a student or? Yeah, I was a student. Last year. So this is, yeah, last year. So this is my first year <laughs> working. I think I've only been working for like 10 months now. So. <laughs> It's good. I have still two more years for graduation. Oh, oh my gosh. I don't okay. I, I miss school, but I don't miss school. I don't miss the test <laughs> the stress. Okay, let's quickly check the presentation. Hundred percent. If my um, phone rings, I'm sorry, I'm expecting a delivery. Hopefully okay. it won't happen now. Okay, no problem. <laughs> You know, we don't have exchange programs. Well, we do, but not in my department. So I couldn't contribute anything there. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, we'll talk. Okay, we can start if you're ready. I'm ready. I don't want to. I don't want to take your time so much because you have a meeting. Yeah, my meeting's at what time? Is it? At eleven. So I think we'll be fine, right? Yeah, we'll probably <laughs> will end like 40, 50 maximum. Okay, okay. Okay, let's start with introduction. Can you tell talk a bit from yourself? Who are you? What are you doing? Okay. So I'm Nicole Abrams, and I studied industrial engineering at the University of Pretoria in South Africa, obviously. And now I'm currently working, I'm in my 10th month of working as an industrial engineer, but I work with the title of a modern work consultant. So mm -hmm. that just involves me um, building out solutions in the modern workplace using Microsoft 365, and then also consulting to external companies. So that's me. I own two cats. You might see them jump up <laughs> here, and I apologize <laughs> for that. Yeah, well, and I foster a little animal. 
So that's that's my real passion, you know. The animal part, I use the engineering <laughs> as the as the job part. Yeah, let's go. So you graduate from University of how can I say Pretoria? Or yeah, Pretoria. Pretoria. Okay, yeah. University of Pretoria. Is it public school or private school? So it's a public university um, mm. that accepts private tuition as well. So you get completely private universities that don't follow uh, government guidelines and they don't uh, get the national funding like mm. the public universities, but they do still accept tuition from students. Mm. So I think that's a big difference. Yeah, all universities here, I think, accept tuition, but we do, if you go to the, the public, if you can call it that, then um, you can get the government funding. We have a government funding um, scheme which I use for quite a lot of my studies. It's actually great. So um, why have you chosen industrial engineering or industrial engineering? Was it your first desire or anything else? So I actually stumbled across industrial engineering like accidentally. I started out studying civil engineering um, mm -hmm. because they don't really in South African schools, the education on your future path, I don't think it's like 100%. You don't really know what's out there. So I started, I did math and physics, and I loved all that kind of stuff. So then I was like, okay, engineering. And I was like, I like drawing buildings. So I was like, civil engineering. <laughs> and then I went into civil engineering at the University of Pretoria. But then um, I actually got a scholarship from Avenard which is a Microsoft and Accenture conglomerate. Mm -hmm. So they're in the tech space, they're consultants. And then from there, I really found out that, oh, that's quite nice. I'd like to do that. <laughs> so then like, I was like, I still want to be an engineer, but I kind of want to go into business. -y. I don't really like the civil engineering space. It was interesting work, but I don't, I don't want to do it for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I did more digging into industrial and then I moved there. I actually completed three out of my four years of civil engineering. And oh. then I, yeah, I made the jump to industrial. <laughs> so I stayed a long time in um, civil before I changed. So did you make a transfer or just starting from the beginning? So we transferred, but basically because the subjects were different, I had mm -hmm. to start like a year back. So I was a third year and then I had to move to second year when I was, and I transferred, but I don't regret the decision. I love it. And I love <laughs> what you did, and I still love industrial engineering. So that's good for me. Yeah. Um, let's talk a bit. I, I'm wondering your university entrance system. How did mm -hmm. it, how did it go in South Africa to university entrance? So um, what you'll do is you have to get certain. You have to do certain subjects and different. I have a delivery. I'm sorry. Can oh, I okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> sorry, I apologize. Of course, it, it that stuff happens when you don't yeah. want it. You know. Sorry, I had a delivery. <laughs> no problem. Um, so what was I saying? University oh, so entrance system. Okay, the entrance into university. So it depends on the university you want to get into and the course. Hmm. Some universities, it obviously also depends if you want to do get a bachelor degree or a diploma. Mm. So I don't know. I know in certain parts of the world, when you exit school level, you exit with a diploma. But in South Africa, you exit with a certificate. So it's your matric isn't as highly looked upon. So then you can choose if you want to go to a diploma or if you want to go for a bachelor degree. So I went for the bachelor degree. I also applied for a diploma, but with a diploma, it's three years. It's not as mathematical and you can't do as much. Like with a bachelor degree, you can obviously go overseas, etc. So that's like the first thing that you want to look at. And then you choose your subject. So some schools will have some subjects and some mm -hmm. schools won't. So it's not like a regulated thing depending on the school you go to. So I chose math, science, engineering, graphics, and design, and accounting. Those are my those are my choices. So that obviously put me on the path to engineering, 
and then um, that was fine. But if you were to not choose that those kind of subjects and then get certain marks in them for mm. your final, we call it matric, so grade 12, your last year of school, there's certain requirements at each university. So I know for University of Pretoria, I think it was mostly A's for math and physics. And then the rest, they just want an average of maybe like 80 or 75%, I forget. And then some other universities might be higher or lower, depending on the university. Mm -hmm. But um, I chose University of Pretoria because there's only two universities in South Africa that provide the BEng um, qualification, so Bachelor of Engineering, which is um, mm -hmm. the best, according to some people. I don't want to say it's the best, you know. There could be <laughs> other places that are the, that are good, but I chose University of Pretoria because I already lived in Stellenbosch, small town um, that had the other. The University of Stellenbosch um, gave the other qualification qualification so the other b engine and then i chose to come to pretoria to do my studies here so it all depends on your subjects the university you want to go into and then um, their entry requirements so those are the three main things to get into university and then you have to go through the application process mm -hmm. which isn't it's not grueling you fill in a form you send it out depending on what you want to study engineering it's not that bad you just need the subject Mm -hmm. My sister studied drama. For that, it was a little, they had to do an audition to get in, but it's <laughs> university applications here is not really that difficult. Maybe for the private universities, then they, they'll they usually have you write an essay or do something. I don't know. I never mm -hmm. applied to a private university. <laughs> have you ever think to study in abroad? In America, yeah, Europe? I, I, I really, I would have loved to, but I'm like, I'm scared. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like, it's a foreign country. Uh, I really wanted to go study maybe in like Germany, uh, mm -hmm. or Netherlands, uh, maybe Ireland too, but I don't know. I like South Africa. I like do it. I like staying here. And I was really, it's really scary because, you know, we aren't, our school system isn't as good as the school systems up there. So it's also that thing of, I go there, it's expensive. What if I fail? So yeah. that took, that was a big impact on whether I would go overseas or not. But we do have exchange programs, but I just didn't take it. <laughs> In your department, but you say we don't have exchange program? So like a university funded one. I know for the mechanical engineers, they have mm. a, a funded program to go to MIT. But for the industrial engineers, we didn't have re we don't have partnerships with other universities where mm. we can go and do the exchange. So it would be a formal transfer kind of deal instead of a nice exchange program, you know. Okay. So it's quite difficult. Yeah. So there's a question which fields we already know you work as a modern consultant. Yeah, right? modern yeah. world consultant. Modern world consultant. And it talk actually. But let me ask you, were there any professions in your mind before industrial engineering? I wanted to be a civil engineer. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't I didn't know what civil engineering meant. Yeah. I, I knew I wanted I knew I wanted to go into business maybe one day start my own company mm -hmm. I I knew I wanted to be the boss but that was about it <laughs> and then I thought I'd do that in civil engineering but now in industrial engineering I think it's so much better oh and I wanted to be a vet obviously and like rescue oh. animals I definitely wanted to do. but there's no money in that and I have to survive <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a life yeah exactly you can't always just do what you want but now i have yeah. three animals and i'm happy so <laughs> yeah we have the same kind of thoughts thoughts in the in turkey mm -hmm. it's a life <laughs> <laughs> okay so the first picture is engineering three mm -hmm. so is it like that engineering one you take it classes from engineering first year and engineering three you take classes from your third year is it that's so, because of engineering three so they are it's just because there's three buildings so the first yeah. building <laughs> engineering one is uh, we have our study center in and we do our admin in 
engineering two because all of our all the engineering faculties are based they all go to the same buildings we're all on that side of the campus so mm -hmm. all of us mechanical industrial chemical all of us so then mechan engineering two has the labs the civil labs the electronic labs the chemistry labs and then a few classrooms and then engineering three is the latest big building gorgeous it has all the lecture halls so that's where most of us will take our lectures where most of us will spend our time so that's the difference between the three buildings. Mm. So there's aula and do. So in the aula, so that's right next to engineering three. So what we do there is we have our ceremony. So maybe if we have um, a certificate ceremony to say who was the best in the year, the top three, you know, all mm -hmm. those achievements that they uh, reward, that will be in the aula. We also sit in front of the aula because there's like this giant patch of grass and that's where all the engineers like go. And we had our orientation in the aula as well. So aula is a pretty big part of the engineering part. And then our study center, it's that third picture there that you'll see. They've actually built a wetland around it because we're engin because engineering one is like on top of it and then it's mm -hmm. the study center. So around it, they've built like a wetland because where it's where the University of Pretoria is situated is actually a wetland. So we destroyed that and they try to make it kind of try to lessen the impact on the environment by creating that wetland. It's actually quite funny because the study center flooded. So the one year when we had a lot of rain because of the wetland and the dry thing. So like all the computers and stuff had to be rescued. It was actually quite <laughs> funny. It wasn't funny, but it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Yeah. So Aula is an auditorium. Mm. Yes. It's actually it looks same. And I can say this is our auditorium, Congress mm -hmm. Culture Hall. We do the kind of same stuffs. And how many libraries do you have on your campus? That's a very good question. I almost <laughs> never went to the library. So that's the Marinsky, right? So that's the, the main one. I think there's only one main one. <laughs> <laughs> like we have, I think, five different campuses, and each campus has a library for them. But for us on the main campus, I think the Marinsky Library was the main one where everyone mm. came to get their uh, study material and stuff like that. I Engineers almost never go to that library because uh, – we have the study center that was built just for the engineers. So that was quite nice for us, but that study center closed. So then you'd find us in the library at like 3 a.m. because it was 24 hours. So that's the Marinsky. But it was at level four was the engineering sector. So I think we had one main library. Oh, and then the law library. The law building had their own law library mm -hmm. because that's obviously so, a whole thing. So is it open 24-7? Yeah, the Marinsky. Yeah, same as us. Yeah, I feel like you have to have a 24-hour library for students, right? <laughs> yeah. We study at all hours. So is this black and white building engineering one? Yes. And then uh, right okay. next to it, that tiny little one is engineering two. And then on the side, you'll see Aula. And then engineering yeah. is the back of Aula. Yeah. So that's like where we all used to sit and stuff and just lie in the sun be between lectures if we had breaks between lectures yeah and you guys had a nice beautiful campus right it was green and open ours is not like that yeah <laughs> out of the city just seeing the lake yeah the lake that was gorgeous we don't i don't think we even have anything remotely close to the lake literally on like the <laughs> other side of that is a giant train track where the oh. train would us. yeah and then like a bad area <laughs> that was the bad <laughs> city. like you wouldn't go there it's not safe so that was quite it was it was a beautiful they tried to make a beautiful campus in the middle of the city so that's mm -hmm. good but it would have been nice to be in nature very much a nature lover yeah um so semester vacation times so I found it from Wikipedia. It says it's first semester starts like early February, mm -hmm. so early June. So is that true? Yes, it's 100% true. Um, so we just 
have depending on the school year because now obviously it's COVID and everything we mm-hmm. might have we have two vacations in the middle of the of the in the middle of each semester so we'll have for first semester which starts in Feb and then ends in um, late yeah. July the first one starts around the, the Easter weekend and we have a lot of public holidays there wow. so um, it's actually quite nice. <laughs> That's like a nice <laughs> off one. And then we'll have another one in, say, May. So it will be like just a week holiday. But usually engineering week is either before or just follows those holidays. So it's not like it's a real holiday. It's kind of a study break <laughs> that we have. And then in second semester, the same. So it'll be in early September, the holiday, and then uh, middle October, and then following the second holiday, you'll usually have your sick tests so or your makeup tests and all the marks come in so that you can write your, your exams, which is a whole month. So either July or November. So that whole mm-hmm. month will be exams or supplementary exams if you fail your exam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about taking courses. So let's look at year by year it's the first year it's, it's almost same math chemistry mm-hmm. you have not physics too just physics no, we only had one physics and then one chemistry so yeah. i think first year for us was all the engineers had a general thing we all did the yeah. same thing to try and like find what you want to do but i Definitely. didn't know so i still carried on and then from <laughs> second year you kind of break up and then you have a few uh specialized courses so i know like the chemical people had specialized courses some of the civil mm. people had specialized courses but we mostly have the same kind of stuff yeah um you have a couple of different so for example workshop so what oh, yes. you... workshop practice was um they essentially wanted to teach us because one day we were all going to be managers and we're going to be mm-hmm. bosses. So they wanted to teach us what the people below us will do. So I did workshop practice as a civil engineer because I didn't have to redo it when I changed to industrial. Mm-hmm. So what they made us do was go out and mix cement and build walls and sand and repaint and lay fences. It was, oh. it was a lot. It was essentially pre-labor, but... <laughs> they, they try and teach you what other people are going to do so that you don't go into the workplace and just order people around and have like unrealistic expectations. So that's basically what they did. I think for the industrial engineers in first year, what they did is because you can't really define what an industrial engineer is. They just kind of um, mixed with the mechanicals and the electronic mm. people and they went and soldered like electronics and stuff like that so they didn't do something super hectic like the civil engineers but it's essentially just two weeks of the whole year going to a site every day like you get either ppe so protective equipment mm-hmm. you get dressed in that like a worker you put on your protective boots you get a hard hat mine was pink i was so <laughs> cute Actually, i still have it like a pink hard hat and then you get on buses and you go to whichever location they want you to work at. And then two weeks you work and it's really good because you also make new friends and you bond with the people in your year. So that was workshop practice. It was it was hell, but it was it was great. It was fun. Yeah, you see you also have linear algebra and mechanics. Yeah, we didn't really do economics, I think. We mostly did accounting in the later years. And I saw you guys had an in- introduction to industrial engineering. Yeah. We didn't really have that at all. <laughs> <For anything. laughs> I think that was a really good subject to have. So what is this community project? Oh, so we also have a project in first year where we have to do some kind of community project. Mm-hmm. Uh, outreach to the community try and make a difference is it something so, like a voluntary job yeah yeah exactly um i think how many weeks basically i think a month or two weeks i can't remember it was but it was a module 
So you had you had a certain budget that you got from the department. You had to go and pitch your idea. They either mm-hmm. had they had a list of projects that you could choose from, or you could go and find your own project to choose from, and then they just have to um, approve it. So then you'd go. So it's a subject, and it works like that. You'd go. You'd apply for the money. Say how much it costs. Shows your show your plans on what you wanted to do in this community project, and then. If it was approved, you'd go out to that specific place that you chose and mm-hmm. you'd go and do a project. So for me, what we did is we went to a nursery school for little children mm-hmm. in an underprivileged community. And then they wanted a carport. So, you know, when you drive your car in and like a little roof. Mm-hmm. So they wanted that because they didn't have it and it was always getting hot. So we were like, okay, we'll build it. <laughs> so... <laughs> It was me and three other people, only one boy, and then like four girls, Mm -hmm. and we built this carport, and it was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. I don't know why we (laughs) did that project. It was was rewarding at the end, and we built them an amazing carport, and we had to, it was really difficult to keep it in budget, but that was great. Um, what other people did is I know a friend group of mine went to the Animal Welfare Society and they put in a new roof for them. Mm. So that was nice. Other people went to other places and just, I don't know, pampered workers, clean, tiled, anything. People would go volunteer anywhere. And that was your project. And then you had to make a presentation and a video. And then, but it was, it was a really good project to see as well. Cause in South Africa, we make a great impact on the community. So it was yeah. a great project to do. So you also don't have computer programming or other years? No. In no, first year, we didn't have, but in second year, we did. So first year, we didn't did. start programming. We started that off in second year. So um, if you did programming in some high schools offer programming, not a lot of them, but we usually start second year and a lot of people suffered and it was really <laughs> difficult. But we used a really easy program, the Python. So yeah. really easy uh, programming language. And then at the end of the course, we had to make a game. So what is that called? Connect three, where you try and connect three and then you win. We mm-hmm. had to uh, code that essentially. And then to get our marks, they would play our code against an AI. And then depending on the win-lose ratio, that's your, that's your mark for the semester. So it was a really fun project. It was a really good subject. I rather enjoyed it. I like coding. Yeah, so differential equations. We have engineering economics. Can we say that? Um, yeah, you have financial management. Probably different. I'm not sure. So what is different? Productivity determined. So you're taking thermodynamics. Um, yeah, we took thermodynamics, which made no sense to any of us. But, <laughs> you know, we had to do it. It was a very difficult subject, but I don't know why they made the industrial engineers do it, but we did it. <laughs> so we learned a little bit about thermodynamics there. And we also had professional communication, mm-hmm. which is one of those subjects that's it's really dumb. <laughs> but it's really it's really useful for some because coming from South Africa, not a lot of people are computer literate or know how to send emails with the proper yeah. uh, formatting and formal language. So we had a whole subject on that. And I think we also then we made a presentation and we had to submit a report, which is like the tiny project that leads up to our final year project. So that was kind of like the introduction to that. So that was cool. So do you have statistics in third year? So we had statistics, but it was kind of built into our other modules. So it wasn't a standalone subject. So we'd had a little bit of statistics in like productivity. We had statistics um, in analyses. So it wasn't a standalone subject. It was kind of spread over all the years in some of our subjects because it was the major right for an industrial engineer so every different subject had it especially operations research that was very much statistics based yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you have a you know different lecture vocation work is this a project mm-hmm. that they give you on the do at at the vacation 
So what is it? So, uh, uh, <clears throat> you guys have internships, right? I think that's yeah. what I picked up. You have mm. internships. Um, I don't know how that works, but with vacation work, you for industrial engineers, it's mandatory to do 12 weeks of vacation work. So mm -hmm. what that means is, you know, holidays, we have to go out and work in an industrial engineering environment and then write a report on it. And that forms as part of our subjects. So you'd like break it up, you know, because uh, like maybe December is the biggest patch where you get six weeks and then you'd break it up in your weeks and you try and get vacation work. There was also opportunities if you couldn't find vacation work to do vacation work at the university, some small projects and stuff like that. But for us, vacation work is you have to go out, you have to find a project, you have to apply to these places to get a project and essentially sell yourself. Yeah. So that, that's a great introduction to the workplace. I think that's what they were trying to get us to do. And then it had to be industrial engineering related because you had to write a report on it, which got marked at the end of the day. So vac vacation work was great. Actually, I, got, I made a lot of great contacts through vacation work. Um, I got a lot of experience because that's where you really see how industrial engineering is applied to the workplace. Yeah. I mostly worked in uh, manufacturing during my vacation work. So that's why I'm not in manufacturing anymore. <laughs> I did enough of it in vacation <laughs> work. How's that different from your internships? Like, does your university sponsor your internships or do they tell you where to go? So our university. So your vacation work, I can say it is pretty much the same with our internships, okay. our universities. Yeah, I get covers our insurance and but they didn't find us uh you know internship mm -hmm. place you have to find it you have to arrange the timeline so pretty much same what you tell about vacation work mm -hmm. our internships it, it, it is mandatory we have two internships one of them after the second year the other one is after the third year and both of our it's too short 20 work days it's four weeks only, but of, of course you can do an internship voluntarily much more mm. long time, but it is mandatory only 20, 20 total for the days. Oh, I see. That's quite nice. Yeah. 12 weeks is a bit stressful. I know some, some engineers that don't get to pass their degree because they don't have those 12 weeks and it's really difficult, right? Like going out, hi, I'm a student, please give me work. <laughs> that's the difficult part getting people to be like okay i'll give you a project yeah that's the difficult part about finding so also of we have a report and i wondering your reports uh, what how do you um, what do you write on your report do you have uh, some kind of instructional book because we have instructional books and which includes questions from our lectures we take you know mm -hmm. operation research economics and you have to solve the question in that company and mm -hmm. write down your report so how is it your reports like yeah so ours is basically the same they'll ask us basic questions like um, what was your project describe your project mm -hmm. what subjects did you apply what methods in these subjects did you apply and then you'll have to literally report on everything you did step by step it's like a five page report i remember it was ridiculous because i was like listen <laughs> I went into a company, I built a solution. I can't write five pages about it because it was, I don't know, I'm not a, I'm a technical writer, right? So mm -hmm. writing a five page report on a project that, you know, I can explain in one page is very difficult. So it was, it was like, it was very basic questions like that. Um, and then they have guidelines for choosing your vacation work. So they would say, these are the questions you need to answer at the end. Mm -hmm. so if you go into vacation work that you can't answer these questions for, then you're not going to get the marks. At the end, like I had a fight with the lecturer. I was like, I think I had like four and a half pages. And I was like, listen, I'm not giving you more. I've already <laughs> given you everything. Because I I included my we had I had to report to management. I had to fill it out a whole presentation. I did everything. And I was like, listen, you can see I did the work. I did engineering work. 
give me my marks. And at the end, he said, fine. So yeah. I was really <laughs> happy about that. I was so angry at the end of vacation because it's really 12 weeks of your holiday for stress. And sometimes you get paid and sometimes you wouldn't. So oh. that was the sort of thing. You know. We don't get paid. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I did one where I didn't get paid, and I did another one where I did get paid. And getting paid is so much better than not getting paid. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So, thirty years in launching modeling—it's kind of pretty much same, same again. Yeah, that's... I think that's when industrial engineering starts becoming industrial engineering. So fourth year is a little bit different. We mostly have uh, optional courses mm. and these are pretty much, you know, not important because we have uh, two main things in fourth year. First semester is <clears throat> was engineering design, I guess, called. Mm -hmm. And second year is final thesis. So mm -hmm. industrial engine design and yeah, senior design. But you have vocation work again, so I assume that is kind of internship yeah. with us, um, business law. So it is interesting. We we can't we don't see anything like um, law rules. Yeah. We had we had um, law, and then there was also some part of what was that? I can't even remember. You see, like they give us these subjects, and it's. <laughs> <laughs> we just do them to pass them. So they try to make us well-rounded and because mm. most engineers go into business or into manufacturing. Where you, oh, labor law. There we go. Labor law uh -huh. and business law. So they were kind of oh. one. Because we go into like manufacturing or business. So it was good to have that background. I still have my law book because it comes in handy actually knowing <laughs> about the law. Um, so we did that. Um, we also did a lot of accounting. Uh, like pure accounting, like management accounting was just accounting, like general ledgers. And you're just like, why am I doing this? I'm an engineer. <laughs> um, and we, we didn't get to choose any courses. All of our courses were core courses. If you do um, post-grad, then you can start choosing things, but you don't choose mm -hmm. your undergrad. Everything is set for you, which is kind of nice, I guess. You set your timetable. You don't have to make one. So that's quite nice. And then we had our final year project, which was first semester and second semester. So mm. it was a year, a year module where everything is just first semester or second semester. Um, but in the first semester was the proof. So the proof that I'm going to do this project, this is the project, this is the literature review, all of that. And then second year, second semester is where you actually implement the solution and you prove that you implement the solution. So. Technically, it could get squished into one semester, but they spread it out because we have so many other subjects that we have to do as well. But final year project was pretty great. Um, so, did, what was made, your what was your final project about? I made an app. So, uh, when I was oh. a student, as like work, I I worked as a pet sitter. So then I get a booking, and I'd be like, okay. Then I go stay at someone's <laughs> house and look after the animals. I loved it because I lived in a tiny flat and I couldn't have any pets. So that's how I got money and also played with people's animals. So for them, they needed like a booking system, an automated booking system. Mm -hmm. So then I essentially designed an automated booking system for them and I tried to make it. That was my final year project. It was pretty good. Do you have an idea of what you're going to do for your final year project? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, mm, <laughs> but, but I'm thinking, you know, logistic or production control, mm. kind of because my previous internship was in uh, mostly in the Department of Production Control and Logistics. Mm -hmm. So it looks interesting, but I have no idea. I got still two more years. Yeah, <laughs> I just yeah, I just focus like on the Germany. I go and yeah. do again, and then we will see what I'm gonna do. Yeah. I suggest you do that by final year. You'll you'll know exactly what you want. Yeah. to do. There's no rush. Okay, so I there is two screenshots from our lectures. You probably have some kind of system, right? It shows 
your points, class averages. So I want to ask you how many kind of things you have. So for example, we have midterm, quiz one, quiz two, mostly. Mm -hmm. Of course, every lecture changes in itself, but mostly like that we have labs, we have finals, kind of four or five things. So mm -hmm. how much do you have or how is it like? Yeah. So greatly depends on the lecturer, but what's mandatory is first semester test, second semester test, and then the final exam. Those are that's the big chunk, mm. and then the semester to the exam is fifty fifty. So then that gets combined. Mm. But what happens during the semester is it completely depends on the subject and the lecturer. We mm -hmm. would usually for like our math, we'd have tutorials. So then maybe once a week we'd go to a tutorial. Uh, ask questions and at the end of the tutorial we would write a test and then all those tests together would cost maybe 10 percent of our semester mark mm -hmm. and then we might have some more important quizzes um, for math but it completely depends like on that semester even like if you complain enough you know and <laughs> everyone did badly in a test they'd be like okay fine this doesn't cost them <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was very dependent on they'd start with something and then maybe they'd add something if the marks were too low mm. or that people didn't grapple with the material properly for the practical we had one subject where it was just group work so all the engineers got together and we had to produce a project so that project was our mark so all the phases of the project were evaluated and put together at the end and then the final project and pre presentation cost the most um so it depends on that and also a few would have projects especially in third year like everything had a project that cost like 30 percent and the rest would be from tests and maybe a few assignments here and there hmm. so that's basically the model of how they'd uh <clears throat> they'd assess us and we wouldn't always get to see the average like oh. they decide yeah you didn't know <clears throat> they didn't tell us um if we were on the average or not maybe if they were nice then they'd be like oh i made this graph but usually it's like here's your marks finish <laughs> so that was it and we had it on like a online system but not all the lecturers use the online system um, oh maybe at the end like you wouldn't see everything captured as it was marked you'd have to calculate yourself and be like am i gonna get into the exam <laughs> oh yeah because you need 40 no 40 percent or 50 percent depending on the on the course to get into the exam so you can't go into the exam if your semester mark is like 20 percent because you're gonna waste everyone's time and fail the exam so that was how that worked but yeah, usually at the end of the semester, there should have been, um, your semester mark should have been posted on our, we called it ClickUp. So uh, it should have been posted on there for you to see. And then also if you got exam entrance, it would usually get posted there. So that was, that was it. I know they've changed it a little bit because not all the lecturers complied and it's a mess. So hopefully it's gotten better now. So exchange programs, you already said that you have Erasmus in your university, but you have a different kind of exchange programs? No. Just an so, Erasmus. Yes. So this is yours, I think. Yeah, the, this one is Melana. Um, it is kind of Erasmus, but uh, you can go to the countries like Morocco. I just write it down. It is not a big deal um, as much as um, Erasmus program, but we, we did. Uh, some of the uh, students wanted to do that, but it's not a big exchange program things. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, Russia, Jordan, Bosnia kind of stuff. And the other exchange program is gives you the opportunity to um, be an exchange student in different city in Turkey. Oh, that's cool. You know, yeah. we, don't, we don't really have any exchange programs that are run by the university, just the MIT one that uh -huh. the mechanicals have. But for us, you have to go out and search yourself if you want to go on an exchange program. Oh. And you'd have to, yeah, you'd have to apply. I don't even know how you go about applying, but you'd have to apply somehow <laughs> to go on an exchange program. Probably have to go to engineering one and ask. 
but yeah, exchange programs would have been nice, but they weren't, they're not very big in my university for the engineering department, mm -hmm. only the mechanicals people. These are the labs. I never seen labs, so, <laughs> but, but I do know we have these stuff in our labs because we will, I will going to see, I guess, in my fourth year you know, doing my thesis, my final project, mm -hmm. but I never seen this. It's basically, you know, 3D printer. Oh, what yes. is this? Um, I think we have a 3D printer somewhere. I yes. think we had to use it for a project once. I've never seen it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great part. I did all the calculations. They had to go and do the 3D printing. But we have, I think, a 3D printer that we use sometimes. But for our labs, we didn't have much labs except for chemistry, obviously, first yeah. year. We had all yeah. the chemistry stuff and then a few mechanical ones but we maybe always have people following us maybe physics labs just a chemical mm -mm, we didn't have physics labs we physics was classes textbook mm. thing so just the chemistry one where we had the and we did it all by ourselves that was actually quite scary the first time you go in they're like make this concoction and you're like what and then you have to like run around this lab in your protective gear and you're we all just came from high school and they're telling us to mix things and in our high schools uh, if you were in a very privileged one then you might have seen somebody make a chemical reaction but to be asked to make a chemical reaction for marks the first time was very scary so chemistry was a very scary subject i remember <laughs> my lab partner was very very useless so I did everything myself. <laughs> so it was very, it was very scary. But that was like for our only exposure to the labs. And then maybe we'd have a mechanical demonstration in some labs. But when I did civil, then we were always in the labs, mixing some men, doing tensile tests, compression yeah. tests, all those tests. So that was was quite fun. And because I'm I'm pretty strong, right? So <laughs> I'd always be mixing and doing all that myself. So it was quite fun. I rather enjoyed that. Then when moved to industrial, mm -mm, no labs, <laughs> only computer labs, <laughs> nothing else. So I guess we already talked about these internships. You have vocation works. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have the name called internship, right? You just have vocation work, second and yeah. third year yes. or third and fourth year. So I think it's second and third, but a lot of people do it in third and fourth because uh, you can if you want to and it's difficult yeah. to get the work so a lot of people actually spread it over second third and fourth year because you just need to get 12 weeks somehow mm -hmm. and then write the report and then you finish so it's technically from second and third but everyone did as much as they could <laughs> through all of it so we, we already <clears throat> talked to uh, all the questions in here so I just pass it. So classically, I guess it is all the same all around the world, industrial engineering work areas. Mm -hmm. What can what can you say to mostly industrial engineering works, which department? So in I South think Africa? engineers in South Africa go, go into either the mining or manufacturing. Mm. So um, because we have a lot of mines, they pay really well. You can go into the mining industry. <laughs> analysis um maybe some it i guess um, yeah. i know i got an offer to go to a mine to be a data analyst there i declined it because i didn't want to go to the middle of nowhere <laughs> i was like i don't care it's good money i'm not going to the middle of nowhere um but yeah manufacturing or mining because that's very big industries here so i have friends that work at mercedes i have friends that work in um metal plants you know melting metal so mm -hmm. anything in between, they're there. Um, I know some people go as business analysts, which is currently kind of the work I'm doing, but I'm more of a consultant and engineer in the mm -hmm. IT sector. And then we also have data analysts, but it's mostly m manufacturing and mining. Very few are lucky enough to go into consulting, but the money sits at manufacturing and mining. So depends what you want, right? Money yeah. or happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and in Turkey? Then Turkey, I can say mostly production control, mm. logistics, and 
I can also say a consultant. There are lots of industrial engineering students in Turkey. Um, what else? Yeah, mostly that I see industrial engineering in industry. Uh, they are working in you know automotive automotive industry mm -hmm. like Ford, Mercedes, mm -hmm. kind of stuff, and also project management. I can say that. But yeah, mostly, you know, logistics, transportations. Mm, makes sense. Okay, yeah, kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I I wasn't expect that because it is <laughs> really, is that correct? It It is, right? So in South Africa, that's around about where you'd see us. Probably on the higher end, it might get higher depending on your sector. Yeah. Uh, so right now I'm earning just below the average in IT, but I was a mm -hmm. little bit above it when I went to mining. I know people that went straight out of school and earned the 45 because they went into mining. So it really depends on if you ask, if you're worth it and it, what, the, what uh, sector you're in. So if you go into like a small company, expect a small salary, but we are paid pretty well. Um, yeah, <laughs> we have we have skills that uh, not a lot of people have, right? So um, you South deserve Africa, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So in South Africa, we're pretty a pretty hot commodity <laughs> to be here. Student asso associations. So as you can see, we have a bunch of different associations. Probably you have. Can you? tell a bit what kind of associations you have so we have literally everything it also depends on uh, the campus you're at so we have different campuses i was on main campus so we have a lot of i took part in sports i was i played netball for the third team so i played netball for a lot of years very good at it i miss it a lot <laughs> <laughs> that's what i did at school uh, we also had engineers without borders which is a charity organization for the engineers specifically we also had doctors without borders um, for the doctors and that was on the doctor campus mm -hmm. um, so we literally had everything we have religious societies political societies um in the university that actually run for student council so you'd actually um, for your student council, you'd vote for a political party uh, <laughs> to run it, which is like, okay, but you'd also have independent candidates. But uh, those were our societies, you'd list anything. The vet, the vet campus would have um, animal welfare societies. I know they breed beagles on the vet campus or something, and then they also have hunting societies. So every, like, go register and then, on society yeah. where you had to be there and you're like we're a society so we had literally all the societies <laughs> even dodgy ones so, did you take part in any of your societies or are you taking part because you're still in school you asking me or general yeah. students yeah. i was not right now but you know the first one is paragliding community Mm -hmm. I was a member, you know, we had a places in Turkey famous with the paragliding. So we are mm -hmm. going and learning how to paraglide. You get pilot certificate. So what I did. Oh my and... word, that's so fun. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I wish I had that. Yeah. You just <laughs> alone in the sky by your own self. Oh my God. It's great. I think it was great. I think the closest we had to that, we had a climbing wall on oh. our school campus, and that was a really <laughs> oh, high yeah. climbing wall. <laughs> so the second one is American football team. Probably you you have a football team, right? Soccer. We have you soccer. Have... Yeah. yeah. Is that soccer. is that Tooks? I. Yeah, Tooks. Tooks. Yeah. Yeah, we have soccer and then rugby, but we don't have American football. Wait, mm. is American football soccer or is because <laughs> I call it soccer and American football to me is that like the not rugby, the other thing, the other one that they do. Now you just um, different is rugby, you just wearing helmets and shields kind of stuff. Yeah. It is tough stuff. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just beat Definitely yourself. A big thing. It's a big thing in South Africa. So. Oh. Yeah, I love me some rugby. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have? Do you have industry and corporations? Because we have this experience training, applied engineering experience training. That in your fourth year, if your GPA higher than three points out of four. Mm -hmm. and you don't have a class from the you know previous years you have to successful for all of the classes you take mm -hmm. so you apply for that and our university our our actual department industrial agent department at our university gives you the opportunity to make a long-term internship these of companies a title Siemens kind of things. So do you have some kind of similar things, industrial corporations? Not at all. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we don't. That would actually be fantastic. But yeah. um, if you pass all your subjects, if you get high marks, I know a lot of people that actually get hunted, right? Because uh -huh. um, being at the University of Pretoria in industrial engineering, we produce some of the uh, most the best engineers in South Africa. So we actually get coached very early. So I have friends that start working in third year and they'll work mm. part-time at these big companies like Deloitte and then they'll continue working afterwards. But we don't have, we can't apply for anything like that. We usually, that's the one thing about industrial engineers. We get hunted. <laughs> so <laughs> at least it's nice, which I had like, I don't know, three, four job offers by the time I, I was three years, three months from graduating and I already had a job. So that's mm. the nice thing about South Africa. <laughs> so I think they're like, okay, you don't have to because obviously you're getting hunted <laughs> mm. to get a job. So getting a job in Turkey, it gets harder and harder because uh, we have lots of universities that opened mm -hmm. last, 12, last 10 years. The everywhere is university so that increase the quality and everywhere is graduated engineers, but they're not yeah exactly yeah. engineers just yeah <laughs> had a diploma <laughs> yeah yeah same same here yeah. but you get what you pay for you know that's yeah. what that's my, always my thing you get what you pay yeah. for yeah you know also in this uh, umde applied ex engineering experience training the most of the students make their final thesis for example you you do your long-term internship at toyota so mm -hmm. you you can make your final thesis with corporate yeah. with Toyota. That's quite nice. I think yeah. that's what people do as well if they have a job. I know I had my friend worked for Deloitte and his mm -hmm. final year project was a project you already did for Deloitte. So it was like, you don't have to like try very hard to find a project and all of that. So it is definitely an advantage. That's actually quite nice. Yeah. They do it. So I think last slide coming to mm -hmm. the end and i don't want to take your time so much because you have a meeting <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk a bit uh, general you know student life the so first the you mentioned it at the beginning about public schools about mm -hmm. tuition fees so private schools probably have tuition fees but we also have um, tuition fee in public schools but not in the you know morning ones we have some kind of education called even, evening education and mm -hmm. mostly students go to the classrooms like after the 5 p.m to the mm -hmm. 10 p.m yeah it's, it is evening education so they paid they give a tuition mm -hmm. fee but i'm not i'm a morning class morning student oh that's quite nice no we pay always <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah we pay always uh i for evening classes i feel like then you have to because some courses don't we don't have evening classes set oh. for everything so it's like you have to choose your course wisely if i want to go into so i want to do my master's now in engineering and technology management uh -huh. uh, and it's only part-time. So that means I can only study that part-time. Uh, I have to take off work for when I have to write tests and stuff. Um, there's no evening classes. It's literally just a week of class. That's it. We don't have options to go in the evening. So it's like that. If your course has morning classes, you go in that morning. If it has evening classes, you go in that evening. And you pay 
all the time. Like we don't, um, I don't think anything is free to a Sri educate tertiary education I was like is it secondary or tertiary yes tertiary education or higher education is um it, you pay it's mandatory to pay but if you uh your household income falls below a certain uh, bracket you can apply for government funding so then the government will pay for your tuition and give you some allowances is depending it, on your needs is it kind of scholarship or just funding from government funding from government so <clears throat> it doesn't really well if you fail you're gonna have to repay but it, ah. it's not it's not on um, merit it's 100 on need um, but i think with covid and everything they've run out of money so now the students don't have that so it's actually quite bad some people really can't afford to go to university but yeah you pay for university and then the private universities you just pay more so <laughs> that's the difference for us and times are set you you go win the classes <laughs> so you probably have i assume that scholarships if you're successful for example mm -hmm. you're you're really yeah. good you have a success scholarships right yes we do i had a scholarship um with Avanade, the microsoft and accenture conglomerate um, mm -hmm. that i told you about earlier they're not in south africa anymore but they were back then and then i was uh, a part of five girls that got chosen in South Africa to receive the scholarship. So that was actually quite nice. It was actually really great. We had the opportunity to go to Seattle, to the Microsoft campus, but I didn't because I had exams. <laughs> so oh, it was so sad. We have scholarships. You can apply. You search scholarships. They give a lot, but it's definitely on your marks. Some are on your need, but a lot of them are on your marks. Mm. And they'll pay, and it, depending on what scholarship you get, they'll pay for your accommodation, scholarship, everything, tuition, everything depends on your scholarship. So accommodations, do you have to accommodation places, dormitories in your campus? So how do you find a place to stay? Um, so I did not want to go stay. So we call it a residence, right? We call it res. Okay. Uh -huh. So I didn't go into res. I don't like living with people. I like my own space. I don't like people touching my stuff. So yeah. I moved into a flat <laughs> by myself. So you'll have flats around the campus and, you know, you just search for them for flats or apartments, apartments, and then you just search for them, <clears throat> um, find rent that's good, find a place that's good, and then you move in there. So that's what I did. But we also had residences, uh, either for postgrad or undergrad. Um, you could apply as you applied for the university and you'd get in either by your need or as early as you apply. So at Tux, mm. uh, the earlier you apply, you're guaranteed to get in. And if you receive a high enough mark based on your exiting marks from high school, that would also play a role. So I didn't go into that, but you can, and then they have their own societies and their own mm. sports. Place. So I kind of miss that. I kind of regret that I didn't do that because I'm a very big sports person and like culture. So I wanted to do that, but I couldn't because I went into a flat. But we do. We also have like boarding houses for university. So my sister, she was like in a boarding house for mm -hmm. high school and then she went to like a residence for university and then she took part in all those things. And it's actually quite nice to be a part of all of that. So we do have accommodation. Um, we actually have like very little accommodation we need more accommodation for people and then we have private accommodation that's also subsidized by the university so mm. like it's not a dorm but it's kind of a dorm you understand what i mean i see yeah so i think this is the last one then mm -hmm. i actually i really wonder yeah i I have a guess, kind of, what is a day in life as an industrial student, but I also wondering what you do as a modern work consultant. Mm -hmm. consultant. Yeah, can you tell a bit day in life as an industrial student and an engineer? Okay, so as a student, studying. That's all I did was. I <laughs> <laughs> video. Industrial engineering was great. I loved it every day. So we our classes started at 7.13 and they ended at half past five in the afternoon. And then you'd have breaks in between. Not all of them started. You know, mm -hmm. some days there'd be nothing, some days there'd be a lot. Depends. And then 
I would go out after that and go to my netball practice because I had netball practice until like half past eight in the evenings. And then I come home and then you have to study and you have to do your tests and stuff and your assignments. Um, so it was, yo, it was chock and block. I don't know how I finished it. <laughs> I don't know how I survived. But that was my, that's the life of an engineering student at University of Pretoria. You study, study, study. If you're part of society, society is usually happen in the afternoons or evenings like mm -hmm. I had sometimes till nine o'clock depending on where in the season we were so after class you literally run to the court or the, go get your meetings whatever you do and then you'd go home and then you'd study afterwards so that was my life as an industrial engineering student you got hectic around test weeks because I usually, I didn't go to Nepal practice then. I was like, no, I have to study. And then they would be upset. They'd be like, you can't do that. We have Nepal. And I was like, I have to study. I want a future. <laughs> like, this is not Nepal. So that, there's that whole thing. Um, and then um, now as a modern work consultant, it's quite nice because you have set work times. And uh, I really enjoy it. And you actually earn money. I'm not as poor as I was <laughs> as a student. Um, but what I do as an as a modern work consultant, so my first title was a what was a junior engineering consultant. So that's when I started. So I'm technically on a graduate program or internship, if you'd like to call it that. Mm -hmm. So they they put me in the modern workspace and then I came with someone else and he went to a different space of data and analysis in the Azure space. So I work with Microsoft 365 and what I do is I basically go in and work as a business analyst and analyst and analyze workflows, um, mm. how people work in their everyday life, how they use their machines, what can I automate, what is fine for them, all of that. That's what I do. And then I'll go and I'll automate it for them or using the Microsoft 365 platform. So that's actually quite nice. And then I'd also maybe make dashboards, create applications using mm. the Microsoft 365 platform. Because not a lot of people know this, but you can do that on the Microsoft 365 <laughs> platform. Like the E3 license, you have so much to do on the Microsoft 365 license. So I, I go out, I do, I conduct um, requirements analysis, speaking to the people, asking them what they do in their day-to-day -day life, depending on a process. So like right now I'm in working, I have a project in the mining sector and I go and I, each in each department, I go, I'm like, okay, how do you work? What are the processes? How do you communicate with everyone? Do you send emails? Do you have to fill out a form? No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. All of this, one, two, three. And then I try and automate that. So uh, we did a contracts management system for them because they were storing their contracts in a really bad way. So then I created an application for them to add their contracts, have all the data that they needed, mm -hmm. and then that gets stored someplace, and then a report gets generated so that they can see it easily. So it's essentially just like optimizing the workplace using Microsoft 365, and I really enjoy it. I do a lot of coding. Um, I do a lot of business process analysis, all of that. So all the skills, a lot of interpersonal skills is what I use in my day-to-day -day work. And I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it looks fine. You have a team you know, for a consultant? You just, by your so own? So I work, I work in a team and that's my role. That's my specialty as the business analyst or sometimes they give me the title of business process um, specialist. So I'll do all of that. Um, in my day-to-day -day life and then I'll have a boss who maybe uh, checks on documents. I have another person who's a migration specialist and she makes sure does the actual migration from mm -hmm. the to the cloud. So um, it's a whole team that works, but that's my function, the workflows and the automation and the documentation of all those workflows and making sure that we have all those requirements um, correct so that we can get a good solution for our customers. Yeah, so, so you working from home right now, right? You, yes. or I work from home. home. Five um, days? Yes, five days a week. Oh. Um, what, what's my hours? Eight to five. 
I think <laughs> <laughs> technically like luck I'm I'm privileged to be in a company where it's like if your work is finished we're fine you can take the day you know it's not you have to sit at your desk for all this time it's just do your work do your work properly and be accountable for your time I expect you to work these much hours if you do that's what we want. If you work less, you're going to be in trouble. So I can I can literally work from 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. if I wanted to, to, if I didn't have meetings. But um, yeah, I work from home. The office is 10 minutes away from home. Um, mm. If I want to go to the office, yeah. And they say, you can go to the office. You don't have to go to the office. So it's, it's really flexible right now. Um, I had COVID like a few months back mm. that I got at the workplace. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> But I still go back. I still I love it because you need that human interaction. Uh, working from home is great because I can I could be in my pajamas right now, you know. So that's that's yeah. the nice part. Very comfortable. Exactly, you're comfortable. I can make myself food, do what I want, lie down on the couch, cuddle my cats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a nice part. But I I enjoy talking to people. Right, talking to people on the computer screen is great, but it's not the same. <laughs> Sometimes you yeah. just want to see a real person. So that's currently where I am. So also you don't have a lockdown in South Africa right now, right? We do, but um, it's like a lower level lockdown. So we have curfews. We mm -hmm. have restrictions on gatherings. And we can't buy alcohol on the weekends. I think that's most of it. But none of that really applies. I'm not a huge drinker. Yeah. I'm a hermit, so I never go out so curfew doesn't apply to me <laughs> and then the gatherings i have a small group of friends so it's like part like big concerts and stuff i don't go to anyway so but like the churches and stuff those are still closed um but i think south africans we're just enjoying life right now it's not like a heavy lockdown so that's good and in turkey what are what how's it going there with you guys in COVID? um we was good at the beginning right now it's there is no curfews no lockdowns mm -hmm. but i think we we are at 60 percent of vaccination mm, okay. so we're we gonna the high schools are already started last week mm -hmm. and university is gonna start after end of september okay. but i assume in, in my prediction probably gonna close universities after one or two months because yeah you know the uh, process situation is not going good but who yeah. cares i will be not in here in germany, <laughs> so <laughs> it is all going great in germany oh that's no good. lockdown face-to-face -face education so mm -hmm. i'm eager to i can't wait yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll I can see. imagine. Oh, oh, yeah, so actually, I'm a little bit curious, nervous about it because it's for one year and just my own. Yeah. No other students from Turkey in my school. I just myself. So we will see what I'm gonna do in here. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be really <laughs> nice. You. I heard Germany is great. So I'm sure. It'll be fine. Thank you. So I think uh, your time zone. What is the time right now? Ten forty-four, right? Yeah, you got a meeting. I think it's the end of the presentation. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for so accepting my offer, accompanying me. It was nice to understand and seeing the differences. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for inviting me. It was really fun. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks so much. You must enjoy your day, hey? <laughs> good luck in Germany. Thank you. I think I, think I can survive in there and it will be yeah, nice. I'm sure you can. It's a really nice place, right? And you're, yeah. you're going to university. It's not like you're going to go yeah. out into the working world. So at least you have a little bit of structure. So that'll be fine. Yeah. Thank you. So I guess it is. That's it. Thank you so yeah, much. And send me the link and everything when you finish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be exciting. I have to edit this. I have to mm. yeah, subtitles. No, yeah, definitely. And I have to uh, make the luggaging stuff. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I have lots to do, but I can handle <laughs> it. 
Okay. Oh, shame. I'm sorry, but thanks again. Sorry it took so long to get around. No, no, to no. It is nice. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Yeah. Thanks so much, Ward. Okay. It was really fun. It was You're nice welcome. talking to someone. Thank you. <laughs> so, take care of yourself. Be safe. You too, in this lovely climate. Good luck with the rest <laughs> of your studies. I hope Thank you. you're going to get into a nice, uh, whatever department you want to go into, and I hope you get it. Thank you, and good luck you're in work life, business life. Yeah. I hope you are successful, and someday you have your own, you'll be a boss. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to be a boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I, I believe so. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we have to close it right now and thank you one more time and take care Bye. of yourself. Bye.